many parts. Diane, Kate, okay. and then this, yeah, usual. Okay. okay. Just want to make sure we're there, they're over there. They're all there. Wonderful.
Good morning. And a special welcome to you all who are visiting St. Teresa of Avila. We're so very glad that you are here. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your flexibility and patience as we seek to make St. Teresa's as safe an environment as possible. While it is impossible for us to guarantee a completely sterile environment here at church, we have been working closely with the archdiocese and surrounding parishes to make Mass as safe as possible for all of us. During Mass, please follow the directions of your usher. Be mindful of physical distancing if you need to use the restroom or get up for any reason. Keep your face coverings on throughout the entirety of Mass and refrain from singing any of the hymns or Mass parts. And as we begin Mass, let us all stand up. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And a welcome to all in the church. We're almost at capacity given the restrictions, so people are now in the parish center. Uh, welcome to you all on this beautiful summer day. We gather on the weekend, we celebrated the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary yesterday, a feast of, of the triumph of life over all the forces that demean life. It's the beautiful integration of body and soul, a feast that celebrates our integrity and our destiny. And so we celebrate with Mary in this beautiful day. We celebrate as a community and a journey, and God is calling all of us in a unique way to spread the good news. And we are prepared to acknowledge a special calling at this liturgy, one of our own, Alex, she's in the front pew here, She's been with us for a number of years. She's been with our finance council. She's just a wonderful person, wonderful human being, a deeply faith-filled and faithful woman, and she's about ready to embark on a beautiful journey. Um, so we're, we're all here, present, or those who are witnessing it through technology, 
we're going to give her a blessing as part of the homily as she goes to enter, I guess, a passion in the vitiate, if you will, with the Daughters of Charity, a religious community. Um, so it's, it's, it's magnificent calling. God has called you in a unique way as he has called all of us in unique ways to live the gospel. So this is such a beautiful mass, such a beautiful way to be here to celebrate a calling, our own and the calling of Alex. As uh, it's already begun, but it's gonna begin in a really super way this week as she moves down to Texas. Let's open our hearts in this beautiful celebration and ask God to fill us with courage for our own journeys. Jesus, we are on a journey to spread love. Lord, have mercy. Lord. We're on a journey to spread peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ. We're on a journey to express hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us sing the praises of our God. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Excuse the poor when they cry out, they afflicted with no one to help. The lowly and the poor he shall pity, the lives of the poor he will save. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am apostle to the Gentiles, 
I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what would their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as, one, as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman of the district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. Jesus said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came back and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. But he said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. But the woman said, Please, Lord, even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. The woman's daughter was healed from that very hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, a welcome to all, especially our visitors here this morning on this absolutely spectacular day. What a very, very weird gospel. It's the gospel I, I never like proclaiming. It's difficult. If this was your first introduction to Jesus, can you imagine if this was the first thing you learned about Jesus was this very reading? Jesus would never make it in the Me Too movement of today. Never. He literally compares the woman to a dog. It's shocking to hear that kind of language, but to give it a little perspective, not to rationalize anything, but the word dog, I mean, we love our dogs, those of us who have them. Um, I have one. I love my dog. Um, I don't 
feed my dog the scraps from my table. I don't because it's not good for her. But in the time of Jesus, dogs were not domesticated. And a dog, that word dog was used to describe outsiders, Canaanites like the woman, pagans. But he calls her a dog and compares her to a dog because she was two things. She was a woman and she was a Canaanite, a pagan. Two major, I guess you could call it, strikes against her. And there are Jesus. How do we reconcile this gospel with Jesus that we know and love? The Jesus who was open-minded, who was inclusive. It's a difficult road to hope. <laughs> the chosen ones, when Jesus says, remember he is divine and human, he was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. That was his mission. And when he became human, he allowed his humanity to grow. He allowed, in his divinity, he gave up, in a sense, his need to know everything. Think of it like this. If he was six years old and on Jeopardy, he wouldn't know all the answers. You got it? In his human nature, he was human. And he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That was, the, that was the vision. He was speaking the truth. But something happens in his humanity, perhaps sparked by the divinity, which sparked the woman. He changed his mind. And he changed his heart. How does that sit with you? That Jesus changed his mind in today's gospel. Truly, how does that sit with you? It has perplexed people for 2,000 years. Can God change his own mind? Is that possible? Is it possible that Jesus changed his mind? He did in this gospel. He was changed by a woman. He was changed by a pagan. He was changed by someone labeled a dog. He was changed. And she no longer became that image of a pagan dog. She became, what does he say? A woman of great faith. The woman, the outsider, the pagan, changed the heart and mind of Jesus. What, he, what she did for him was she basically said, you may be called to the house of Israel, but I think God is saying to the house of Israel, you're called to a larger calling to the world. And that's exactly what happened in this gospel. It's the first moment Jesus realized in his humanity he was called to a larger world than just Jerusalem, Zion, and the temple. He was called to the world. It all occurred through an outsider, through a woman, and a Canaanite, a pagan. That's the miracle of this particular gospel. I'm not trying to rationalize anything here, but we are getting a translation of a translation of a translation. We don't have the original. We don't know what this dialogue was like. We don't have the original Aramaic. Once again, this is English I'm reading. And many scholars think this may have been a play, if you will, kind of a humorous play, a Yiddish-like play, if you will, of words. We don't know, but we do know is she went from, I can't give food to the dogs, to you are a woman of great faith, the child was healed. Great things happen to us when our hearts expand and our minds expand. Jesus' mind was expanded by this woman. Everyone in this church, you have the potential and the calling to expand your heart and expand the hearts of those you live with. Children, you can get your parents to change their mind. It's never easy. <laughs> never easy. It was never easy for me even when I was an older man. It was always difficult to get them to change their mind <laughs> because they were always trying to change my mind. Minds need to be changed. Hearts need to be changed. And Jesus gives us a beautiful way of doing it by listening. And we're gathering around a parishioner today, a woman who in many ways is joining a religious community 
who is much like the woman in the gospel. She is about to embark on a beautiful journey. God is calling her, he's calling you, Alex, in a very unique way. All of us are unique in our callings, especially if you're called to be a parent. That's a unique calling. But right now he's calling one of our own to religious life. I hope you understand, those of you that are seeing this, the beauty and the power and the inspiration of this. And that's why I asked if she wouldn't mind doing this as part of our mass, because she's a parishioner. And by the way, this is the second woman, young woman in our parish, who has joined religious life in the last five years. You all should leave here really so filled with hope. Despite all the events that happened last Monday, you should, be, you should leave this church with such hope and love. For one of our own, a few years ago, gave three years of her life as a Marianel missionary. She joined the Marianel community. She gave her three years of her life in Central and South America, just returned. And now we have Alex about to embark on her journey to the Daughters of Charity. For those of you who don't know the Daughters of Charity, it's one of the many religious communities of women. We have the Vincentians to our north, the priests and the brothers, and now we, have, we also have the women, the religious, called the Daughters of Charity. So she's joining a community that's so dear to our life here, our ministry, given what they do, both communities of DePaul, what they do for the poor. In the community of the Daughters of Charity, I looked you up. <laughs> I did my research. I've seen your history, and I've known it, but I refreshed my memory. And your community has a unique ability to do what this woman of the gospel, and I know you know what I'm gonna say, is to say to people to challenge them, to challenge them to give food and to call people not aliens, which is another way of, in, in many ways, of saying dog, but to call people human beings. The Daughters of Charity are women all around the world who have heard the call of Jesus to respond to those who are not a part of the community, who are not cared for, who are pushed away, and they're called to prick our conscience, if you will, and to teach us to broaden our hearts and our minds so that we can see the world as Jesus learned to see the world through the woman from Cana. The Daughters of Charity, that's kind of a mission. They're missionary. Their mission is to enlarge hearts and minds. That's where you're going. And I can't think of a better human being who has answered that call. We've got her right in the pew, front pew here. She's been a part of us for a number of years. She's been on our finance council. She is the best taker of notes. And I know there are some people here, I don't, she's the best. I'm just telling you, there isn't anyone who is as beautiful as you are. And, but more importantly than your gift of, of helping us with our finances and learning how to read them, you are so wonderful. But your true gift is your love of Christ and your faith in Christ and the outsider. And you're allowing your enlarged heart to want to make other people's hearts larger. And your example here is going to make hopefully 80 people here and perhaps several hundred watching, you're going to uh, inspire us to read this gospel in, in a new light and to say, if Jesus can change his mind, so can we. Isn't that powerful? If he can do it, so can we. Isaiah says the foreigners, this is what Isaiah, one of the Jewish prophets, the foreigners will come to the temple. The foreigners, not the Jews, the foreigners. Already, even in Isaiah, you have this expansion. And the church is the temple, if you will. And the church must destroy all that prevents people from coming into the beauty of the temple of the church. And the Daughters of Charity are poised so beautifully to do that. And just so you know, she's going to be leaving next weekend. On what day? End of the month. She's going not near Brownsville, right? 
Well, she's going not far from where our mission, La Posada Mission in South Texas. That's where you're going. So I'm, I'm gonna put you on another mission is to say, hi, somehow connect with them and just say hi to, from, you're still, you'll always be a part of St. Teresa's and just to go there because they, they would love what you're doing. <laughs> and the nuns there, the sisters there would love what you're doing. And, and that way we spread the message. So that's where she's going. So I wanted you to be a part of this because you're a part of this community and you will always be a part of this community when you leave here at the end of the week. Thank you to your, your parents. Uh, what a gift you are. You gave her to us and to the world. Um, and she's just like that woman we heard in the gospel. She's gonna be on a mission to change hearts and to change minds. And she's helping us do so right now. So I'd like in the name of the community, um, I'd like to bless you, um, if you don't mind. And I call down the spirit of Jesus, the Jesus who literally opened his heart to a woman, to a Canaanite, to a pagan outsider, and called her a woman of faith. Send your spirit upon this woman of faith, this daughter of charity, this daughter of love. Send your love into her hearts, in our hearts, but in her heart especially, as it continues to expand as she answers your call on a mission to enter into religious life and to discern that calling. Be with her, strengthen her in this last week before she leaves Chicago and she, or she goes to Michigan and beyond to Texas. Strengthen her in her calling. Strengthen her to always listen to you and to know that you are always her companion. You join with her on this beautiful, beautiful journey of faith. And when she goes to Texas, help her realize that she has this beautiful mission to reach out to those people who are excluded, those people who feel they have no place, those people seeking asylum, those people who are refugees, those people who are undocumented. She will be a sign of God's love and presence. She will be a true testament to the title of her community, a woman of charity, a daughter of charity. And so Alex, may the Lord Jesus Christ be within you, may sustain you, before you, that he may lead you, behind you, that he may protect you, above you, that he may bless you abundantly, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Rise. I believe in one God, the Father, the Lord, maker of heaven, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, born of all ages, God from God, life from God, true God from true God, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son as adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. A sense of deep hope, trust, and love. We open our hearts and we pray. that Jews, Christians, and Muslims, and all people of faith may find renewed strength in God's mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations and peoples may find lasting peace in God's guidance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the ill, the infirm, and the dying may find abundant comfort in God's deliverance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who worship here may find welcome joy in God's gifts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may find everlasting glory in God's salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mass today, we honor Ms. Diane Pape. 
We also pray for those who recently lost their lives to violence in the city of Chicago. Darren Sims, Carlton Weekly, Markive Mack, Vicente Mojica, James Kelly, Tristan Mitchell, Keith Richmond, Hugo Tecomateco, Courtney William, and Dion DeLay. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are in special need of our prayers, for those for whom we have promised to pray, and for those we pause to remember in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those in religious life, um, especially for the Daughters of Charity. The community Alex is joining for their beautiful work, their inspiring work throughout the world as they reach out to welcome all those who, are, who consider themselves, feel that they are outsiders for their vision of making the church uh, a beautiful, welcoming home for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many of our children, especially those in Catholic schools in Chicago, will be going back to school this week and next week. St. Benedict the African, that's our, par our parish school, actually a school that we're trying to help. We don't have a parish school, but they're gonna go back tomorrow. They've asked us to pray for them. The teachers and the maintenance staff and the, everyone and the administrative staff have worked hard to make it a safe environment for those children since May. They've been working really hard on the school at St. Benedict the African. They asked us to pray at this liturgy for them as they begin um, to come back to school, um, that they have a good year, a healthy year, a safe year. And for those children who are going to be learning at home, uh, in home learning, we also pray that they will continue to expand their own minds and hearts with knowledge. And so we love our children, however they're gonna learn this fall, wherever they're gonna learn, let us just pray that they will be safe and healthy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And loving God, we gather as your people, the church, strengthen us with hope, which we so desperately need in these days. Help us to answer our own call to be a good mother or a good father, a good single person, a good religious, a good priest, a good whatever. Help us to answer your call in our own lives and may your love take root in our lives and may each one of us give a unique witness to that gospel, the gospel you proclaimed to all nations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
offerings of sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just here in salvation to give you thanks, Lord God, for your laid foundations of the world. You have arranged a changing of the times and the seasons. You formed us in your own image, sending us over the whole world and all of its wonder. So the angels, the archangels, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy Lord, the fount of all holiness, make these gifts holy by sending down your spirit upon them to become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat up it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. The supper was done. He took the chalice, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life, this chalice of salvation. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered as one by the Spirit in union with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all those who lead us in faith. Remember all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Have mercy on us all. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Our Lady of the Assumption, with St. Joseph, Teresa of Avila, St. Vincent de Paul, and the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with the risen Lord and pray the prayer of his kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, so we pray, from all disease, but graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all fear as we await the blessed open coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I gave you look not on our sins and the faith of the church and graciously grant this church peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And share that peace. Peace be with you. Peace.
Yes. Behold the Lamb of God, be the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be you. May the body of Christ strengthen all of us to serve the poor. Amen. to remind all of you before coming to communion if you to wait to be signaled to come up to communion and please respect the six foot distance that is required of all of us keep your mask on after you receive the host in the hand you move over a little bit and then lift the mask consume the host and then go back to your pew and then at the end of mass please wait until you're um, asked to leave we're going to leave the church from the back to the front so we're not no more we can't just leave um, when I'm gone it has to be done row by row um, to respect um, the restrictions that we need to take place and to keep people healthy. That's what we want to do. So thank you.
We do have an announcement for uh, St. Benedict the African. Uh, Ellen's here. Thank you, Ellen. Hi, everybody. My name is Ellen Moyani. Um, I've been a parishioner for about seven years now, and um, I wanted to let you know an update about our work with St. Benedict the African. So when the pandemic hit, uh, we had this big book drive, and that stopped everyone cold in their tracks, obviously. Um, but this school year, more than ever, they really um, are looking for our support and our prayers. So we actually have a teacher here today. Um, I'm not gonna call her out, but Ms. Kavanaugh is here if she wants to wave her hand. Um, she is coming to get the books that we've given. Um, and she also lives in Old Town, so we're excited that she's here with us. Um, and definitely pray for her. Uh, along her journey this year. Um, so we are giving the books out. If you do have any books left as you've been cleaning out because you've been stuck at home, uh, feel free to bring it next mass or drop it off at the parish center. Um, and then we re-upped the Amazon wish list. Some things that were on there were maybe not applicable. And so uh, we let them edit. So we will have some more things on there like paper towels and hand sanitizer and things like that that they will need because they are going back. Um, and then we'll keep you updated uh, as much as we can to minimize, you know, um, and make sure we're following CDC 
guidelines, we're going to be doing that. So um, Ms. Cavanaugh is going to be able to take the books. We're going to get everything through Amazon. So uh, we, we can make sure it goes directly there. And be t stay in tune for more work. But they really need our support and our prayers this year. It's really going to be a difficult year for their families down there. So if you have any questions, I'll be here. Um, feel free to let me know and get involved. Thanks, Ellen. Mm -hmm for all your help um, in connecting our parish with St. Benedict the African, what a great ministry they have. And I know they're going back tomorrow and they asked me to ask you, please pray for them. It's a tough time um, for all, everyone, but when you're trying to start school in the midst of this pandemic, um, so they're really gonna try and keep all the children safe as they go back to school, I think tomorrow, um, if not tomorrow, next week. So in terms of the parish, we're, we're gonna baptize a baby, our eighth baby in the last five weeks. So our baptisms are actually going up. Um, our outreach ministries, so those of you should know, are actually at they, where, where they were before the pandemic. They're, some, they're actually higher a little bit. So our outreach ministries are actually growing. Um, we're doing great. Our baptisms are fine. We have four weddings scheduled for the next for three or four months. The weddings are starting to come in, just so you know. So things are moving forward very, very slowly, uh, very slowly. And I understand why. But um, we are, have a Bible study. I have a Bible study once a week with the Zoom, the Zoom thing. We meet with the staff. We meet with the parish council, the finance council. We're going to miss you, Alex. <laughs> so your first time, that, wait till next month. We're going to realize how much we miss you. But everything is going on. The parish is going on. The meetings are happening. It's just distant. The meetings are distant, and they're Zooming, which gets to be a little bit tiresome. And, and everything is, is, is going well. So thank you for your support. Um, please join uh, Give Central if you can. Um, we need all the help we can get that way. And you have been very good. And thank you for your generosity, for your love, and your, especially the support of the collections. Thank you so much. So far, it's going OK. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And our, finally, our fundraiser is in November. It's coming up. Joy to celebrate. It's going to be great. It's an online um, fundraiser. Please, please mark the time, the date. That's Saturday before Thanksgiving. Um, Please try and participate um, um, digitally, if you can, electronically, computer-wise, whatever. Um, we're doing the best we can. So thank you. And Alex, you've been an inspiration to us all. So thank you. There's a beautiful cake. It's, I asked you what if you liked vanilla. It's vanilla. Uh, Sweet Mandy Bees, I think it's from there. So it's a beautiful cake. We're going to cut it safely. So I invite all of you here at least take a piece. It's going to be cut with gloves on there. It's all safe. There's also Coke, Diet Coke, water, bottles of water. So even if you go take a bottle with you, um, take a piece of cake with you if you want. It's delicious cake. And, um, and, and maybe you just want to wave to her before she, you know, would be very kind. For those of you who are here, just to, in the parish center, in the parish gathering space, just give her the best. So thank you so much. And Alex, just keep in touch. Keep in touch. And when I get down there to visit Posada, I'll have to come and see you. So let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through the Eucharist, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs in heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is then we go in peace to serve the poor.
Joy for all the members in the song. 